Hey everyone, my name's Ed Hope, your friendly neighborhood junior doctor, and this video is another rapid fight scene trauma diagnosis where we break down iconic fight scenes from TV and movies. Today, Invincible, the Amazon animated series based on the Image Comics graphic novel by Robert Kirkman. The premise is essentially we have something resembling the Justice League, a Superman type character, Wonder Woman, The Flash, I'm not quite sure who that one's supposed to be. And then some stuff really kicks off. One such thing is an epic fight scene at the end of the first episode where Omni-Man, the Superman type character, goes berserk. Warning, spoilers, and graphic content. Three, two, one, fight. Firstly, saving people traveling at this speed is a terrible idea. Remember that scene from The Boys where Robin met A-Train? You'd get something that closely resembles that. And even if you could somehow stop right next to them momentarily, the second you accelerate off, the G-force would be so high for them, it would fracture their bones and shear all through the tissues in the body. For example, the neurons in the brain would be severed and all the blood would rip out of your blood vessels and you'd die instantly. As I said, not a great way of saving people. Super punches to the anterior chest. If you or I had this kind of blunt force, superhero punches to this area, we'd be looking at rib and costochondral fractures, maybe even sternum fracture, and damage to underlying thoracic organs like heart and lung contusions. But because it's Omni-Man, he just suffers a ruptured T-shirt. Okay, so bitemporal head crush injury. Now, you don't need to be a doctor to know that's clearly fatal. But in general, providing the cranium so the dome part of your skull doesn't fracture, you would easily survive this. But as soon as the skull fractures, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble because then this force is gonna be directly transferred to the delicate brain tissue and blood vessels. And usually when it does fracture, it occurs at the base of the skull with the main symptom you'd see being otoragia, bleeding out the ears rather than the eyes and the nose we see here. This type of traumatic brain injury mechanism, so a crush mechanism we refer to as a static loading mechanism. So there isn't a lot of movement there as opposed to a dynamic loading, say a blunt force trauma. Static mechanisms generally have a better outcome because the concussive force on the brain is less. However, when it happens, this extreme complete crush of the head resulting in destruction of the brain as well as massive hemorrhage, this isn't compatible with life and so we call it a catastrophic non-survivable brain trauma. A boa constrictor type trauma here around the neck is the most problematic because it's going to clamp down on your carotid arteries, the main blood supply to the brain. What in wrestling terms would be called a blood choke, meaning you'd be unconscious within seconds. And if this choke is continued to be held, would kill you as your brain would be starved of oxygen. The cells in the brain are very metabolically active, so they can die in as little as five minutes. That would be for you and I trying to survive it. However, for Omni-Man, it would be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Blunt force trauma to the left cheek and then similar to the right jaw. We see the blood here, so no doubt lacerations and a hematoma. Or maybe that's the blood that's been on his face from when he crushed the face of Red Rush. Who knows? Either way, he might also occur a fracture of the left zygomatic arch and a fracture of the right side of the mandible. Both of these would visit the MaxFact surgeons after we've ruled out any injury to the brain. Blood force trauma to the facial bone, so nasal bone fracture and traumatic epistaxis. Just like Batman, 
Darkwing here is less superheroes, more kind of super skill, and this is demonstrated by the resulting injury from this blunt force trauma to the head. On the initial impact to the face, we'd have facial bone fractures, possible base of skull fracture, also a coup and contra coup contusion to the brain, and possible intracranial bleed. So just this injury could easily have been fatal on its own if he was left to bleed out or had raised intracranial pressure from swelling and bleeding that squashes the brain inside the skull. However, he doesn't have to wait long to be put out of his misery with the second impact, so another catastrophic non-survivable brain trauma, so complete destruction of the skull with the brain tissue spilling out all over the floor. The huge force here has also caused a fractured dislocation of the right upper limb. <laughs> Less important given the stuff going on upstairs. <laughs> Okay, so high velocity penetrating traumatic brain injury. Really, this is akin to like a close range gunshot wound to the head, as well as complete destruction of the skull. All that brain tissue would be ripped up by that concussive force. Blunt force trauma to the temporal bone. We've seen this a lot in this series, particularly dangerous this one. A superficial hematoma is to be expected and maybe even a depressed skull fracture, but the real worry would be damage to an artery that sits just underneath the temporal bone called the middle meningeal artery. If that gets ruptured, we'd get an epidural bleed that would increase in size, so increase the pressure in the skull and compress the brain, initially making you unconscious, but later on killing you by squashing your brain out of the hole at the base of the skull. Not a good way to go. <laughs> I'm not up on my fish anatomy, but as a rule of thumb for any animal that you see brain tissue on the floor, they're gonna struggle. several blunt force traumas to the face, so hematomas, lacerations, facial bone fractures, and maybe losing a few teeth. Trauma to the central abdomen. Looks like we actually have an exit wound here, so normally punches we'd think of as a blunt force trauma, but given the speed here, they end up being penetrating traumas. Most concerning would be massive hemorrhage from rupture of the aorta or the inferior vena cava, but lots of other major blood vessels in the abdomen too. There's also the possibility of a bowel perforation, which would kill you from overwhelming sepsis, but that takes a few hours to kick in. And if somehow you manage to survive all that, possible lumbar spinal injury too. Jesus Christ, this rapid rotational head injury going through 180 degrees, this is gonna rip every structure in the neck. So pretty much an incomplete decapitation. As well as the airway and the blood vessels to your brain being completely transected, you'd also get transection of the spinal cord. Any damage to the spinal cord around C3, 4 and 5 can kill you as this is where the nerves from the diaphragm originate, your main muscle of breathing, so you'd essentially go into respiratory arrest. And then hey, why not a complete decapitation again not compatible with life, so much so we wouldn't even attempt resuscitation. I mean, physically, how would you give this person rescue breaths? So let's do our kill count, and for the first time ever, I can say with absolute certainty that seven are dead.
and I'm not too sure of the physical strength and physiology of Omni-Man. He looks pretty messed up here, and if he was you and I, he'd probably be in critical condition with those head injuries. So there you go, another rapid fight scene trauma diagnosis of this brilliant scene from Invincible, and a fantastic first episode. I did not see that twist coming of Omni-Man slaying all the other superheroes, so I can't wait to see where the series progress. The next fight scene I'm breaking down is the church scene from Kingsman. So if you don't wanna miss out on that, give this channel a subscribe. That one was voted for you on the channel. And so if there's any more fight scenes you want me to check out, leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thank you so much for all the support on the channel. You continue to blow me away with all the comments, the likes, the shares. Thank you so much. So until next time, I hope you're all well and I'll see you soon.